Hey guys, Matt Kentucky Range Time, back with another episode of our 357 Magnum uh, ballistic gel block test with five different barrel lengths. And today we're going to be focusing on the Hornady 110 grain XTP. Now, Hornady makes this XTP line of bullets in five or six different bullet weights. There's the 110, the 125, the 140, the 158, and the 180. And when I get done here, I will have tested all five of those, uh, those weights. And I think there might be one more floating out there. I know there's the 158 flat point, which I'm also going to be testing uh, here in a little bit. Um, and I'm going to have a picture of these, uh, all, all these different bullet weights together uh, coming up here at the end of the video uh, during the slideshow. So hang around and check that out. It's pretty neat to see the differences or the lack thereof between these, these bullets. And, uh, you know, it's pretty obvious when you see them stacked up there beside of each other. But... Having said that, let's get turned around here, take a look at the loading, get out to the range, and we'll see what these things want to do. All right, guys, unless you're a newcomer to my channel, uh, this is going to look pretty familiar. Um, I, I do the recap here of the components I've used loading these bullets. Uh, I don't give powder weights uh, charges during the video, but uh, sometimes if, if, uh, <clears throat> if somebody's got questions about those, I'll, I'll discuss those in comments later on. But uh, we're looking at 38 cal. Uh, 110 grain XTP bullets, uh, Starline brass, and power pistol. This is a little bit of a departure from my normal H110 Winchester 296 uh, choices and CCI uh, small pistol magnum primers. And let's turn around here and get a good look at this loading. So here we go. There is not a lot of bullet down in the case on these, as you can see here, compared to a lot of the other XTP loads. So. Uh, you know, that's something to note. I do have a, uh, a about a medium crimp on this bullet uh, just to uh, keep it from, from moving around too much. And uh, it's pretty standard. I, I typically do the same crimp on all my 357 mag loads. Uh, I've got it set up over here on the Dillon. And, uh, you know, it's just, I don't, I don't usually change that unless I'm running a big heavy load with a really hot charge and a revolver where I can get some bullet jump there and uh, eventually you know, time you work through a, a full cylinder, uh, those rounds can be too long and it'll lock the, lock the action up on the gun. But, uh, all right, so here's a, a quick teaser for the spreadsheet coming up here. This will be in the slides at the end of the video as well. And let's head on out to the rings. All right, guys. Uh, so this test is going to be the uh, Hornady 110 grain XTP bullet. And I'll be running this out of five different barrel lengths uh, as the video progresses. 20 inch Rossi, six and a half Taurus, five inch Ruger, three inch Rossi, and a two inch Rossi. And Lossies will be collected on the uh, Garmin Zero C1. So let's get going. This is the Hornady 110 grain XTP. Velocity was 1,974 foot per second. Let's go see if we got a catch. All right, guys, so these three entries right here was uh, from a previous test. Uh, this is our wind track right here. We got that, that typical uh, Hornady XTP opening up there. And this is our wind track right here. Carries right on down. Looks like a nice, pretty good size uh, temporary wind cavity there down to about nine inches. Expansion was almost immediate. Right here, about half to one inch. And looks like our final penetration depth is right about 14 and a half inches. I'll get in here and take a good look at this bullet. Looks like this thing has almost completely flattened out. My gel block's getting pretty cloudy. Let's see if we can get a better view from this side. So, there we go.
So these gel blocks have been recycled probably seven or eight times already. And I made the mistake of running some uh, high powered rifle rounds, uh, 300 blackout in these when they were new. And those bullets were so fast, the supersonics, that they were charring some of the, uh, some of the gelatin as it went through. And first time I've shoot in gel block, that was a mistake I've learned now. So I'll keep my, my gel block, my clean gel block for pistol rounds. And then once it starts getting older, I'll start using it for rifle rounds. But all right, let's go back and shoot the six and a half. All right, guys, next up is the, uh, the Taurus Tracker, six and a half inch barrel. It was $15.99. Let's go see what we got. All right, guys. So this is our wound track right here on this one. And pretty much the same expansion. I believe if you look at the, <clears throat> the six little pedals coming off, these are about an inch farther down the gel block than it was for the rifles. So I'm going to say that the, the decreased velocity resulted in this thing opening up a little bit slower. But if you look right there, it still had most of the job done by three quarters of an inch. All right, so wound track, got a nice temporary wound track again, really similar to the rifle round. And look here, guys, we're sitting here right about 14 inches of penetration maybe just a quarter inch less penetration than what we got with the 20 inch rifle barrel. And that is actually looking at the back of the bullet. Uh, the pedals have folded all the way down around and turned inside out and covered up the base of the bullet. All right, guys, so that was the uh, the Taurus six and a half inch. Let's go back and try the Ruger. All right, guys, this is a Ruger five inch GP 100 with the 110 grain Hornady XTP. Velocity on that was 1471, just under 15 foot per second. Let's go see what we got. All right, guys, right here's our wind track on this one. And you can see this one open just a little more delayed again. There again is that slower velocity. Had a little bit of a down slope to this. It actually crossed the wound track from the rifle round and stopped here about 15 and a half inches in. So we got about, focus. Got about 15 and a half inches of penetration with this one. So, so far they're all laying in there pretty close together. All right, let's go do the, uh, the Rossi three inch RP-63. All right guys, next up is the Rossi RP-63, three inch barrel with the Ruger 110 grain XTP load. Velocity was 14.05. So these things are smoking up there pretty good. All right, let's go see what we did on that one. All right, guys, so wound track starts right here on this one. Again, we had uh, pretty much full expansion by one inch. Got those little lead flyers coming off there. It's this wound track right here. And we track her on and down, running downhill just a little bit. And looks like our total expansion is out here right at 15 inches. And it's laid right in there with the other the other three rounds from the previous barrel length test. So this is uh, pretty amazing that as these barrels get shorter, uh, the expansion is going down, but the penetration is staying so close 
from the 20 inch all the way down to the three inch so far. But uh, let's go see what we do with the two inch and see if we can lay it in there. All right, guys, last up is this uh, Rossi snub nose with a two inch barrel. Um, this is the Horner D 110 grain XTP. Velocities at 1251.6. And let's go see if I got a catch. That one actually hit pretty low. All right, guys. So I actually did a second shot with the uh, two inch. The first one hit down here really low, and I think it actually uh, skimmed off the table and ended up down here just past 16 inches. But I figured that's hitting the table like that stole some velocity, so I did a reshoot on that one. So the wound track we're looking at here starts right here. And we do have some pretty good expansion out here, about three, two and a half to three inches. Got some lead fragments that, that peeled off in that area. And uh, track right on down, got a decent little wound cavity down about five or six inches. And then it looks like we just picked up some straight line penetration. And guess what? We're sitting at about 17 and a half inches. And we have exceeded penetration with the two inch barrel over all the longer barrels with faster velocities. But if you notice, we didn't get near the expansion we did on the other bullets. So, uh, all right, guys, I'll get these dug out of here and we'll have pictures coming up later. So, all right, guys, here's the results after I got them dug out of the gel block. And, uh, you know, this this little round, it's a lightweight, but it's designed to do a particular job, and it does that job very well. Uh, you know, we had some really nice temporary wound cavities right up front with this thing, just, just like we did with most of the other rounds. Uh, the the increased velocity, I think, added to the, to the wound channel, whereas the weight wasn't there. But the, the really impressive thing for, for me was that all except for the two inch round uh, landed basically within an inch and a half, almost an inch and a half of each other uh, where it finally stopped in the gel block. So everything from the 20 inch to the six and a half, the five and the three, uh, those four bullets ended up within actually 1.7 inches of each other. That was the spread on these. And you can see here that they all mushroomed out quite nicely and uh, you know, just a really, really good performance. And the, the lighter weight kept these bullets from driving so deep, uh, which in smaller game would mean a, a pass-through shot. Uh, so, but this this is probably some of the best expansion that we've got out of any of these bullets as well, uh, being able to pack the velocity behind these. So uh, just a, a really, really impressive performance out of this round. That's right, guys, there it is. Uh, the the Hornady 110 grain XTP, and I've been impressed with, with pretty much every one of these bullets I've tested thus far. I mean, uh, everything has had really good expansion. Uh, everything has had decent penetration. And, you know, this bullet design, <clears throat> uh, the, the jacket the hollow point here, is just, just very, very efficient. When they've opened up, they've opened up fairly quickly. Uh, you know, they, they've either in the in the slower shorter barrels you know they they've come up to around four and something you know 4.1 4.2 uh, uh inches of uh of expansion and, and drove it in nice and deep and uh and in the larger rounds you know they they've mushroomed out quite nicely up front dumped a massive amount of energy up front and uh and, and still you know got decent penetration on these so um, i've been getting a lot of questions about which bullet weight is the best uh, carbine revolver combo bullet? If you're going to carry two guns, uh, a, a lever action rifle usually, and, and a revolver, what's, what's the best bullet weight to carry? And uh, it's hard to say. Every one of these bullets has performed very well out of both the revolver and the lever action. And, uh, you know, I've got a few more to test. 
So let's let's wait till the end. I think I'm going to end up with about seven, uh, maybe eight of these videos. And at the end, uh, I hope to do a recap video where I, I can sit down and I can crunch through the data on the spreadsheets and do some comparisons uh, on, on, on the math, on the actual statistics on these and, and see if anything is, a, is just a, a, a really nice standout or if everything is going to be a good choice. So anyway, stay tuned for that in upcoming videos. Like I said, coming up here in a minute is the spreadsheet. I've got 15 seconds on this thing, so you can pause the screen and crunch through those numbers uh, if you like. Um, I've also got a lot of pictures. I've got uh, pictures, combo pictures of the, of the pistol and the caliper reading and uh, the velocity chart from the chronograph and the scale reading on the retained weight on these. And, uh, and then I also have a picture of all the different bullet weights of these XTPs that I have uh, lined up. And, and that's going to be worth waiting around to look at. So uh, anyway, hang around for the slideshow, guys. And as always, thanks for watching. If you haven't already, please hit that like and subscribe button. And I would love it if you would copy the link at the bottom of this video and share this out to some of your friends or on some of your other social media sites. So anyway, Matt from Kentucky Range Time. We'll catch you on the next one.